these characters certainly have God on their side. All those things I can do, all those powers, and I couldn't even save him. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Deus Ex Machina moments in movies. Look at the goddamn bird! For those who are unaware, a Deus Ex Machina moment, meaning God from the machine, is a moment in storytelling when the characters solve or escape an otherwise inescapable situation due to an intervention by something beyond their control or from completely out of nowhere. What does God need with a starship? It's often considered a lazy or cheap way to solve a problem and tie up loose ends. But today, we're counting down our favorite big screen instances of Deus Ex Machina. It's King Richard back from the Crusades! <laughs> Boy, now I'm in trouble. Number 10, the wildlife suddenly takes an interest. Avatar. Check, check, you copy? We're falling back, we're getting hammered. In this James Cameron epic that broke box office records, humans have set up a mining colony on an already inhabited planet named Pandora. Their damn village happens to be resting on the richest unobtainium deposit within 200 clicks in any direction. Tensions boil over, leading to a climactic battle with the local aliens, the Na'vi. Just as the Na'vi are being overwhelmed by the humans' superior technology and strength, the movie literally has the god of the planet set its wildlife to attack the human army. The characters speak of a literal divine intervention and answered prayers, so at least the movie is aware of its own cheap device, but it still doesn't make it any less ridiculous. Number 9. The Military Saves the Day, Shaun of the Dead. Take car, go to Mum's, kill Phil, sorry, grab Liz, go to the Winchester, have a nice cold pint, and wait for all this to blow over. Sure, it may be a goofy comedic zombie movie, but an easy out for the characters means an easy out for the writers. When Sean and his friends go to the pub to wait for the zombie apocalypse to, quote, blow over, it goes as well as you'd expect, which is, of course, very poorly. But luckily, Sean and Liz are saved just in time by the until now unseen military. <laughs> Seeing the army save the day in a zombie movie is actually a little satisfying. And you could make the argument that it is, in fact, an ingenious way of satirizing the whole deus ex trope. They're taking us somewhere safe. I thought you two might want to tag along. Is it just the two of you? Well, glad somebody made it. Number eight, an easy and lucky death, The Wizard of Oz. Ring around the rosy, a pocket full of spears. That should be pretty boxy, didn't ya? Even this all-time classic is not without its storytelling cop-outs, as evidenced by the ridiculously easy way the Wicked Witch is dispatched. When Dorothy and her group are trapped by the witch, the green-faced baddie sets fire to the scarecrow. How about little fire, scarecrow? Only to be hit by a stray splash of water when Dorothy douses him. This in turn kills her, ruining what could have been an otherwise memorable confrontation. Ah! You cursed brat! Look what you've done! I'm melting! Melting! While her infamous I'm melting scream is legendary, the events preceding it are dictated entirely by luck, resulting in a largely unfulfilling death. She did. You killed her. I didn't mean to kill her. Really, I didn't. It's it's just that he was on fire. Hail to Dorothy! The Wicked Witch is dead! Number seven, The Sword, Pacific Rim. It's your only chance! Don't you just hate it when a movie suddenly springs a character's new ability on you simply to solve a problem? Such is the case in this scene, when one of the last Jaeger mechs protecting Earth from an invading kaiju is taken for a ride into space. <laughs> It seems that all hope is lost until the Jaeger suddenly uses a sword and cuts itself free. We're out of options, Marco! No! Mother Ho Hoga no Kotte! Sword deployed. Why have we not seen this before? Because it looks a lot more effective than everything else you've been using so far. You know it's bad when even your character says, We're out of options. It's a simple case of an exciting action scene that needed a quick and easy resolution. Number six, Seven Primes, 
Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. This Michael Bay series is filled with deus ex machina moments, like when Optimus Prime gets a jetpack. But even we think Robot Heaven is even worse. You have fought for Optimus, our last descendant, with courage and with sacrifice, the virtues of a leader. This scene gives us three for the price of one, as the evil Megatron kills Sam, who is then revived by the Seven Primes. Not only that, they restore the destroyed Matrix, which allows Optimus Prime to also be revived. Return now to Optimus. Merge the Matrix with his spark. It is, and always has been, your destiny. The movie solves three problems all in one divine intervention. So at least it's meta like Avatar, but it shows lazy storytelling at its absolute worst. Boy, you returned for me. A living prime! <laughs> I don't believe it! Number 5. Death by Alligator. Adaptation. In this semi-autobiographical film about Charlie Kaufman's battles to adapt The Orchid Thief, he's almost killed by Poacher LaRoche while hiding in a swamp. I don't want to die, Donald. I've wasted my life. God, I've wasted it. You did not. You're not going to die. Luckily for Charlie, an alligator suddenly appears out of nowhere and kills LaRoche before he can get a shot off. You put yourself in... <laughs> ah! Not only is this an extremely lucky break, it also comes at a perfect and opportune moment, effectively proving that luck is often a major force in both of our lives and in the films we love to watch. You are what you love, not what loves you. That's what I decided a long time ago. Number four, literal god of the machines, The Matrix Revolutions. Oh, we get it. God of the Machines, Deus Ex Machina. Do you get it? Yeah, these Wachowski brothers are so clever. Speak. The program Smith has grown beyond your control. Soon he will spread through the city as he spread through the Matrix. You cannot stop him. But I can. In what is perhaps the most meta Deus Ex Machina ever, Neo meets a literal machine god and asks it kindly to end the world that has been going on for centuries. <laughs> Peace. Not only does the god obey and end the battle in an extremely anticlimactic fashion, it also gives Neo a connection in order to go back into the Matrix to finish off Smith. It's an incredibly convenient end to the trilogy, but one that left fans fuming with disappointment. Oh, no, it's not fair. Number 3. Alien Spacecraft. Monty Python's Life of Brian. Perhaps one of the most famous, and definitely the funniest, deus ex machina ever, this scene is legendary among comedy and film lovers alike. When Brian falls off of a tall tower, it seems to be the end of our hero, until a UFO carrying grotesque aliens catches him midair and drops him off safely. It's a completely ludicrous scene and makes no sense at all, but then again it's Monty Python, and ridiculous humor is technically their speciality. It's Deus Ex Machina done right, as it draws attention to the outrageous contrivance. Oh, you lucky bastard. Number 2. Reversing Time. Superman. Remember when we said that we hate it when a character pulls out a new power out of his bright red underwear? Well, when Lois Lane is killed in a landslide, Superman revives her by flying around the world so quickly that he reverses the rotation of the planet and thus rewinds time, because that's how it works. Putting aside the fact that this makes absolutely no sense, it's ridiculous that the movie has to resort to Superman using his powers in an otherwise completely unheard of way to solve the problem. I'm well, sorry about that, Lois. But I've been kind of busy for a while. Before we miraculously present you with our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. That's my secret, Cat. I'm always angry.
Number one, bacteria kills the aliens. War of the Worlds. What happened here? I don't know. Something's happening to him. Please keep moving. So let's go. Let's go this Spielberg remake of the 1953 classic that everyone pretends they've seen was full of big action and explosive set pieces. As the situation got bleaker and bleaker, audiences were expecting a fantastic and climactic closer. But instead, we're treated to voiceover narration explaining that the aliens basically got colds and died to their lack of immunity to Earth's bacteria. From the moment the invaders arrived, breathed our air, ate, and drank, they were doomed. While we can't blame Spielberg entirely, as the ending was written by H.G. Wells, it's still a disappointing finale to a summer blockbuster. With such a lame conclusion, it's no wonder this movie received such extensive criticism. Lesson here is, audiences hate being cheated. Do you agree with our list? You doubt me. What Deus Ex Machina moment do you think stood out? For more godly top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. How's that for a slice of fried gold? Yeah, boy!